Okay, so we went over shares. Now let's talk about the other kinds of ownership rights you might run into. Common shares and preferred shares are examples of equity, where the share price gets determined at the time that the shares are granted. When you incorporate, you might authorize the issuing of 10 million shares. But right now, you're at the earliest stage of your company, right? At this stage, a lot of founders don't know how much their company is worth. Maybe there's no revenue yet. Maybe there's no product yet. For whatever reason, they just might not be ready to say what their share price is. Problem is, they still might need to raise money in order to get their business up and running. So how do you raise money and give shares to investors when you don't actually know the price of one share of your company? Say hello to the third type of asset you'll probably have on your cap table, a convertible instrument. Convertible instrument sounds like a fancy word, but it's basically just a type of contract for fundraising. For me, the easiest way to think about this is kind of like an IOU. And here's what I mean by that. With a convertible instrument, early stage investors provide financing today, and in exchange, you make them a promise for tomorrow. You say, thanks for the money, and I promise that at a set point in the future, I'll have a better idea of how to price my shares. And at that time, I'll convert your money into actual shares. If you've never heard of it before, I get it. It sounds kind of weird, but it's actually super common, especially when you're talking about early stage financing. That's because convertible instruments allow founders to raise the money they need today before they know how much their company is actually worth. Another big advantage of convertible instruments is that they're a much easier and quicker way to obtain funding. A traditional funding round, also known as a price round, can require months and months of negotiation over price, tons of due diligence, all kinds of legal fees. With a convertible instrument, there are usually only a couple of pieces of info that make up the terms of the deal. So it's a much easier, much faster negotiation. So, okay, let's break down convertible instruments a little further. There are two essential kinds of convertible instruments that you need to know about, convertible notes and safes. The key thing to know about a convertible instrument is that it's a debt instrument, AKA it's money that your investor is lending you, basically like a loan that you get from a bank. And eventually you have to pay it back with interest. But here's the thing. The way you pay it back typically isn't with cash. It's with shares in your company. Let's break that down. Right up top, this is gonna be a really simplified example. And we always recommend talking with your legal team to understand the specifics of your situation. But here's again a stripped down example to help you learn the basics of a convertible note. Let's say an investor gives you $100,000 on a convertible note. That 100 grand comes with an interest rate of 15%, and a maturity period of one year. So in a year, the note will mature, and at that time, you have to pay back the original investment, plus 15%. All right, so we fast forward to one year later. Over this past year, you did a bunch of stuff. Your company grew, you hired some people, et cetera, et cetera. But one of the most important things you did was you raised another funding round, like a Series A. The Series A fundraise was a priced round, meaning it allowed you to value your company at a set price. And since you know what your whole company is worth now, you also know what one share is worth. Beautiful, it's now time to pay back your original investor. Remember, you gotta give them their original $100,000 back plus 15% interest, meaning in total, you'll give them $115,000 worth of shares in your company. See how what you ultimately did was convert the investor's original investment into equity? That is why we call this kind of arrangement a convertible instrument. You're doing a conversion. But hang on, because we might have a problem, right? What if it's one year later and you haven't raised your Series A yet? Maybe you're still early on or you don't know the price of your shares yet. So how would you then honor this convertible note contract? This is one of the challenges of convertible notes that you should be aware of before you arrange this type of agreement with an investor. Our predicament all comes down to the maturity date. You work this out with your investors when you create the contract. If you decide on a maturity date, it legally locks you into fulfilling your end of the deal on the date that the loan matures. If you don't have the ability to convert their equity at that time, you may be able to negotiate with them to extend the maturity date and buy yourself a little more time but if the investor isn't willing to do that, they could sue you for breach of agreement. In the worst case, this can lead to all kinds of headaches, even bankruptcy. 
It's important before you raise a convertible note to have a clear plan for raising your next round of financing during the term of the convertible note. Let's run through the main components of convertible notes. Number one, they come with a discount rate, meaning when you finally give your investors their shares, you'll do so at a cheaper price than you give your other investors. Think of this discount kind of like a reward for backing the company so early on. Number two, convertible notes have a conversion trigger. Basically, this outlines the thing that has to happen for you to convert your investors' money into shares. A maturity date is a conversion trigger. Another example would be a trigger that says you'll convert their shares once you've raised $5 million. Finally, convertible notes have a valuation cap. The valuation cap sets a maximum value at which a convertible security will convert into equity in the financing round, which probably sounds like gibberish, right? Valuation caps can be a little confusing, but luckily we have lots of resources on our website and our YouTube channel that break down valuation caps into plain English. So if you want to learn more about them, I'd encourage you to head over to our site and take a look. All right, that's a convertible note. Basically, what you need to remember is this. It's a form of debt, typically repaid in shares, with some incentives for the investor to take a chance on you early. They also have some potential drawbacks if the company has difficulty raising more funding. 